Hello, here's the, the key for the 3.1 to 3.3 quiz. All right, so question one, uh, we have a solid carbon tetrachloride, CCl4, it's represented in the diagram above. The attractions between the CCl4 molecules that hold the molecules together in the solid state are best identified as... So CCl4, that's a, a tetrahedral shape. Um, it's symmetrical, so it's going to be nonpolar. So between these different molecules, this is a this is a molecular solid that's being held together. Uh, it's going to be intermolecular forces, and since they're nonpolar, it's going to be London dispersion forces. So now we look at our choices. It's going to be intermolecular attractions. We know that, um, and then it's going to be uh, London dispersion forces are caused by temporary dipoles. So that's going to be letter C. Number two. At 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere, Br2 is a liquid with a high vapor pressure and Cl2 is a gas. Those observations provide evidence that under the given conditions, the... So comparing the two, so we got Br2 is a liquid, Cl2 is a gas. So that means that um, the, the forces between the Br2 molecules are going to be stronger. And to go from a liquid to a gas, um, when you have these uh, nonpolar molecules, you have to break the intermolecular force between them. So that eliminates C and D. It's not the, the bond between the two chlorines or the bond between the two bromines that have to be broken to go from a liquid to a gas. It's the intermolecular forces. So um, Br2 is a liquid, so that's going to have stronger forces. Cl2 is a gas. So we can say forces among Br2 molecules are stronger than those among Cl2 molecules. So this is talking about the intermolecular forces. So it's going to be letter A. Okay, question three, dealing with these three molecules right there. So it says, based on the information in the table above, which of the compounds has the highest boiling point? So this is about the intermolecular forces between them. Uh, if we look at molar mass, we can just eliminate that. They're all pretty much the same, so that's not going to be a, a, a big factor. Um, so it's asking for the one with the highest boiling point. So we're asked to find um, the, the one with the strongest intermolecular force. So looking at these different ones, they're, they're all going to have London dispersion forces. Every, every particle has London dispersion forces. So looking at this right here, um, you get this carbon chain and you have this this bond right here. This is going to be a polar bond right here. So that gives it a dipole-dipole forces right there. Here's a carbon, but it's not going to be hydrogen bonding because the hydrogens are, are all bonded to the carbons. So we'd have to have hydrogen bonded to oxygen. So this is going to have dipole-dipole and London dispersion. Uh, the pentane is just carbon and hydrogen. So this is always a nonpolar arrangement, so it's only going to have London dispersion forces, so that's going to be weaker. Uh, the propanoic acid, uh, this is going to have this, this, it has this OH bond right here, and that gives it hydrogen bonding. Whenever you have hydrogen bonded to oxygen, fluorine, or nitrogen, you have hydrogen bonding, so that, that's the situation right here. So this one, hydrogen bonding, is the strongest of the three intermolecular forces. So this one's going to have the highest boiling point. So now we go down to our choices right here. Uh, propanoic acid, because it can form intermolecular hydrogen bonds. So D is our answer there. Okay, the London dispersion forces are weakest for which of the following gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. So um, these are all going to be nonpolar particles. So um, in the notes we talked about that uh, when you're comparing London dispersion forces, larger molecules or particles have more electrons and are more polarizable, and then they'll have uh, stronger LDFs. So we're looking for the weakest, so we want to look for the smallest particle here. So that's going to be H2. That's going to have the fewest number of electrons. It's going to be the least polarizable, and that means the weakest London dispersion forces. So A is our answer. Number five, um, these are uh, this question about properties of solids. So we have a sample of a hard solid binary compound at room temperature. It did not conduct electricity as a pure solid, but became highly conductive when dissolved in water. 
which of the following types of interactions is most likely found between the particles in a substance. This is talking about an ionic solid. Um, they don't conduct electricity when they're solid, but when they dissolve in water, they do. Um, and, and they're hard, they're, they're solid. Um, so it's going to be ionic bonds, letter A. Number six, which statement best helps to explain the observation that NH3 boils at negative 28, where pH3 boils at negative 126? So NH3 has a higher boiling point. So NH3 is going to have um, hydrogen bonds. These are both polar molecules, but this has hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, so it's going to have hydrogen bonding. Uh, whereas this pH3 is only going to have dipole-dipole forces. So this has stronger intermolecular forces, and that leads to a higher boiling point. Okay, so for that one, we've got uh, NH3 is hydrogen bonding that is stronger than the dipole-dipole forces in pH3. So it's letter C right there. Um, D talks about hydrogen bonding, but it's backwards. It says it's weaker. And it's not about dispersion forces. Um, NH3 has, has hydrogen bonding, so let her see. Number seven, which of the substances listed above has the highest boiling point? Um, so again, another question about boiling point. Um, to, to boil, we have to break any intermolecular forces. Um, NE, that's a noble gas, so that's just going to have London dispersion. And these are both just carbon and hydrogen, C2H6 and CH4. So they're also going to be nonpolar and only have LDFs. HF is a polar molecule, and it's hydrogen bonded to fluorine, so it's going to have hydrogen bonding. So it's going to be, let's see, letter B, HF, because its molecules form hydrogen bonds. So that's going to have the highest boiling point, letter B. And the last one, number eight, uh, which of the following most likely describes a solid represented in the diagram above? Okay, so this is a picture of an ionic solid. You should uh, recognize that, positives and negatives. And then the positive ions are smaller than the negative ions. So now we've got to just uh, figure out which properties correspond to ionic solids. Um, it's soft. No, nope. ionic solids are not soft. It has a low melting point. Ionic solids have high melting points. We get rid of B also. Um, it's brittle. Yep, that matches. Water soluble, yes. Uh, poor thermal and electrical conductor is a solid, that's it. So letter C. Um, it's malleable, ionic solids are not malleable, so we get rid, letter, get rid of letter D also. So the answer is C. And that's it. Have a great day.